The total value of all your assets minus the total value of all your obligations equals your net worth. To put it another way, net worth is the difference between what one has and what one owes. You have a positive net worth if your assets outnumber your obligations. You have a negative net worth if your liabilities exceed your assets. According to a 2020 Gallup poll, 72% of Americans stated they belong to the middle or working classes. When asked how they define their social class, people also consider other characteristics such as education, locality, and family background when defining their social class, according to experts. Larger economic trends may also have an impact on how people perceive their social status. Economic factors such as excessive inflation, waves of employee resignations, struggling small enterprises, and other repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic have had an impact on worker and business prosperity and health in recent years. Unfortunately, current class-related statistics from 2019 does not account for the pandemic's economic impact, and we won't see the numbers until late 2022 or later. The evidence implies that the median American household income is either stable or slightly down compared to incomes in 2019, says Rakesh Kachar, a senior researcher at Pew Research Center. Inflation has increased since 2020, peaking in 2021. However, we do not yet know what has happened to wages. Real incomes may be impacted by the pace of inflation. The average household net worth in the United States in 2019, the most recent statistics available, was $445,900, according to data from the United States Census Bureau. $118,200 was the median net worth. This is a significant disparity, demonstrating how wealth concentration among the wealthiest households can affect the average. Class distinctions and net worth. The term class refers to a power structure based on social and economic position. Class and money are not synonymous, even though they are strongly related. Our attitudes, beliefs, and expectations are heavily influenced by our social status. These impressions have a long-term impact on how we think and act. For the vast majority of people, our social status is the most important determinant in deciding which income bracket we will remain in. There are three main types of classes the upper class, the middle class, and the lower or sometimes referred to as the working class. The United States Census Bureau employs quintiles to dig further into the country's wealth. A quintile, like a quartile, represents one-fifth of a group. The middle class can be better understood by segmenting Americans into five economic groups. The division with the smallest net worth is the bottom wealth quintile. The richest 20% of households belong to the top wealth quintile. Younger households, and those with little education, make up the bottom quintile. The younger generations have had less opportunity to accumulate money, and there's a link between educational attainment and wealth accumulation. The top quintile has a higher proportion of older households, and those with the highest level of education. The middle class. The middle class is frequently defined as the three quintiles, in the middle income distribution. The lower middle class, middle class, and upper middle class are all terms used to describe this group. The term middle class has no one definition. Wealth and financial security are influenced by a person's income, net worth, education, and occupation. In the end, middle class people enjoy a moderate sense of financial freedom, but they still need to rely on things like their continued earning potential and credit to fund substantial costs or buy significant assets. The middle class is defined by the Pew Research Center as households earning between two-thirds and double the median U.S. household income which was $61,372 in 2017, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. People earning between $42,000 and $126,000, according to Pew, are classified as middle income. The middle class makes up 52%, which is a slight majority of the population in the United States, although it is the smallest it has been in nearly half a century. The middle class's proportion of income has decreased from 62% in 1970 to 43% in 2014. Due to a growth in population at the extremes of the economic spectrum, the middle class is diminishing. You have to judge yourself in the context of where you live and the cost of living to know if you're truly middle class. Money with Katie's Katie Gotti explained, The majority of a person's net worth is tied up in their home, which is the most obvious marker of someone who is middle class. In other words, you're middle class if your net worth is $500,000 and your home accounts for $450,000 of that. Managers, small business owners, instructors, and secretaries make up the lower middle class. Doctors, attorneys, stockbrokers, and CEOs are among the upper middle classes. These are highly educated individuals and professional with high incomes. The Upper Class 
The upper class, which accounts for only 1 to 3 percent of the U.S. population, owns more than 25 percent of the country's wealth. There are two groups in this class, lower upper and higher upper. A net worth of $1.9 million, according to Schwab's 2021 Modern Wealth Survey respondents, defines a person as affluent. The typical household net worth in the United States, on the other hand, is less than half of that. However, wealth is in the eye of the beholder, and a person's impression of riches can be influenced by a variety of factors, such as his or her location, occupation, community, and background. As new generations enter maturity and redefine success, such perceptions may change. Indeed, according to the annual Schwab study, people are lowering the bar for what they consider to be wealthy. In comparison to 2021 norms, Respondents to the 2020 study described a net worth of $2.6 million as the wealth threshold. According to Amy Richardson, a certified financial advisor on Schwab's Intelligent Portfolio's premium team, rising inflation and low unemployment rates are both factors that affect how people perceive wealth in addition to the coronavirus outbreak. We don't know how this bout of inflation will play out, but in the short term, regardless of their unique notions about wealth, many individuals feel like they need to obtain more to reach where they want to go. Richardson stated in an email, A lot of individuals who are wealthy in our nation are wealthy not because of income, but because they possess assets, such as real estate or other investments, that have gained, Phillips adds, whereas money pays for a person's lifestyle and day-to-day -day expenses. Those with new money, or money earned from investments, commercial initiatives, and other sources, belong to the lower upper class. Those aristocratic and high society families with old money, who have been wealthy for generations, make up the upper upper class. The revenue from their inherited wealth is used to support these extraordinarily wealthy people. The upper upper class has higher status than the lower upper class. The lower and working class, for many people, poverty is more of an identity or a series of events than a financial indicator. If you've overdrawn your account at the grocery shop or spent nights sleeping in your car, you may feel destitute. If your parents were poor, or if you can't afford new clothes or a good education, you could feel poor. Poverty, on the other hand, is defined by more than an emotion or an experience. The poor and the lower middle class are separated by government poverty measures and various income limits. Poverty might be difficult to define. You may feel like you're really struggling, and you may be, Gregory Axe, Vice President for Income and Benefits Policy at the Urban Institute adds, but your income could be far above the poverty threshold. Individuals and families can utilize a variety of methods to determine whether they fall into a specific definition of poverty. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the official poverty rate was 12.3% in 2017, with African Americans and Hispanics experiencing significantly higher rates. According to the 2017 poverty threshold provided by the U.S. Census Bureau, an individual under the age of 65, with no children, earns $12,752 per year, which is below the poverty line. As the size of the household grows, so does this number. A four-person household with two children under the age of 18 falls below the poverty line at $24,858. With revised methodology and data, another metric, the Supplemental Poverty Measure, tries to improve the approach to assessing income and poverty in the U.S. The supplementary poverty rate was 13.9% in 2017. According to the Supplemental Poverty Measure, the poverty level for two adult, two-child households without mortgages was $23,261 in 2017, and $27,085 for two adult, two-child households with mortgages was $27,085 in 2017. Poverty can be defined in more ways than one. Just because you aren't poor doesn't mean you aren't in need of help. Someone with a low income but access to money and assets, on the other hand, may not be or feel destitute at all. The media frequently stigmatizes the lower class as the underclass, incorrectly portraying impoverished people as welfare mothers who abuse the system by having an increasing number of children, welfare fathers who are able to work but do not, drug addicts, criminals, and societal trash. Dishwashers, cashiers, maids, and servers are among the class's unskilled workers, who are frequently underpaid and have limited opportunities for growth. The working poor is a term that is frequently used to describe them. Carpenters, plumbers, and electricians are among the skilled workers in this sector, and they are frequently referred to as blue-collar workers. Secretaries, teachers, and computer technicians may earn more money than middle-class workers, but their professions are also more physically demanding, and in some cases, dangerous. The average net worth by age and education. Because households collect assets over time, such as real estate, cars, or other vehicles, and retirement savings, net worth rises with age. 
net worth and education are strongly linked. As per a federal research survey, education can assist in the creation of wealth in three different ways. The Head Start Effect College-educated parents are more likely to earn more than their non-college-educated counterparts, potentially giving their children a leg up in life by allowing them access to better performing school districts, private schools, and tutors. The Upward Mobility Effect A youngster born into a family without a college diploma can significantly enhance their economic status by earning a diploma. In comparison to where they would be without a degree, such a family's income percentile ranking is projected to climb by 23%. The downward mobility effect happens when offspring of college-educated parents do not go on to get a college diploma. Statistically, they drag down their wealth by 18 percentiles. Depending on your financial status, there may be federal or state programs that might help you with housing, food, and educational costs. Government programs such as Social Security, unemployment insurance, and refundable tax credits, such as the Earned Income Tax Credit, are all designed to help people get out of poverty. Understanding if you qualify for benefits and how to get them might help you build a safety net. It's also a good idea to do everything you can to get and keep a decent job, with room for advancement. The surest best thing to do for people who are impoverished, but able-bodied and pretty healthy, is to work, and to work at a profession that not only pays well, but also offers opportunities for advancement. Working for a company that does not provide paid sick leave has even been connected to poverty, according to one study. So seeking or fighting for these benefits is critical. For others, no amount of accumulated riches will suffice, and many people who meet these criteria may not consider themselves wealthy. Others who are suffering with debt or unemployment may feel defeated when they see these wealth standards. Experts claim that knowing how you stack up against your peers might help you learn about money management and good financial practices. They recommend collecting wage cues from coworkers and competitors, as well as developing net worth goals that take into account the possibilities found in peers, as well as your own unique circumstances. One crucial indicator of your financial well-being is your net worth. It shows crucial information about your ability to pay off debts and have assets accessible for long-term living expenditures, retirement, and estate planning, since it quantifies the gap between what you possess and what you still owe. Simply, the more money you have, the more financial freedom you'll have. So where do you stand in the American economic hierarchy? To figure out where you fall, consider your income, education, marital status, location, family history, gut instinct, and a variety of other criteria. However, the basic conclusion is that figuring out the answer is more complicated than simply looking at a number. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and let me know your thoughts in the comments.